Okay, so how much running is good for your heart and when does it cross over into being too much? Um, so in, you know, in general, there's overwhelming evidence about the benefits of exercise. So I, I, uh, really want to encourage exercise. Again, um, athletes, uh, have, have longer life expectancy. Uh, and so again, most Americans need to worry about doing too little exercise rather than too much. Um, so there, but there has been some studies that have suggested that maybe extreme exercise may confer some increased risk. And, and again, um, for, if you want to do cardiovascular wellness, cardiovascular health, you can get most of the cardiovascular benefit at moderate intensity activity. We recommend between 150 to 300 minutes a week of moderate to vigorous activity. Um, and some data have suggested even three to five times that amount actually may be the sweet spot, um, which is at the lowest cardiovascular risk. But there's been a number of studies that have looked at kind of the extreme ends of this and have suggested some signal of increased risk. And I first want to talk about that these are observational studies. These are not um, randomized clinical trials. And associations don't always mean causation. Um, and it may be that people that do these really intensive ultra marathons or very intensive competitive events over and over and over again, maybe they have some other risk factors, uh, you know, type mm. A personality or uh, <laughs> they drink too much or party too hard or intense a lot of other <laughs> actors of life. But getting back to the, the data, there was a 2019 study in JAMA cardiology that looked at over 21,000 men. And again, most of these studies, unfortunately, are men. There's less data in women. Mm. Um, um, but suggested that um, men that were at very high activity levels, more than 3,000 mets per minute per week, had increased prevalence of coronary artery calcium, calcium in their arteries, which we usually think is a, a marker that there is plaque there in the arteries, atherosclerosis. Although interestingly, this wasn't associated with increased risk of either cardiovascular or all-cause death after a decade of follow-up. So they had more apparent plaque in their arteries, but it wasn't wasn't associated with an increased risk of death. And there's been a lot of studies suggesting that maybe it's trans, you know, exercise is um, causing a more stable form of plaque. That there's been mm. other studies that have looked at something with called the CT angiography. So uh, with with dye, um, uh, contrast dye, where you can look at the types of the plaque, and suggested that um, these athletes had uh, more calcified plaque, which we think is more of a stable plaque, they were less likely to have softer and non-calcified plaque, which we think is the more vulnerable plaque that's more likely to rupture. So repeated exercise at high volume may be converting, if there's atherosclerosis there, into a more stable plaque phenotype. Um, and so that might be why there's not excess risk. Of course, we want to prevent plaque in the first place. So it's really mm -hmm. important that all adults um, have all their cardiovascular risk factors screen for, that you can't outrun a poor diet, you can't outrun a high family his risk of genetics of, of high, you know, family history or other risk factors. Um, being physically active can help reduce your risk if you have other risk factors, but it's important that you get all your risk factors addressed um, and, and mitigated.